Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name's Rob Wilson, and this funky looking thing is the Honda E. Okay, so let's start at the front, as we always do. And isn't it? You're so cute. Look at it. He's got little eyes and a sort of face. It's it, honestly, it could be the cutest car on sale today. Speaking of those lights, it has nice little round LEDs, very posh and premium. Below this Honda badge, there is some safety stuff going on in there because this car comes with, you know, all that sort of city autonomous braking and adaptive cruise control and all those big boy toys that they uh, squeeze into these little cars nowadays. And then above the Honda badge is a little camera because that comes as part of this being the advanced model. You get cameras all the way around. But the most interesting styling quirk of the Honda E is this little thing here. This is what I think is a Brabantia bin. Because if I push this button here, it opens up and I can put my rubbish in. No, it's where you charge it in here. Put your little cable, plop, goes in there, charge, close it up. Ta-da, isn't that so neat? And it looks cool, it's distinctive. I like it. Should we go and look at the side and see all of those wonderful little quirks that it's got there as well? So here's the side of the Honda E and um, the funkiness continues with some nice 16 inch wheels you can upgrade to 17s and they have a slightly different wheel design but you do lose some of the range if you do that you will notice no mirrors no mirrors to be seen here just a camera housing with the indicator bit in there as well this is actually um, water resistant or hydrophobic or whatever the term is so even if it rains the camera won't get covered in water and you won't be able to see so it's actually better than a mirror in that respect look how these door handles are completely flush if you want to open you push the front bit in stick your fingers under open wow and you'll notice frameless doors now that is premium uh, moving down it looks like a three door but no wait hidden door handle up here again frameless opens up nicely like that now um, looking at the roof you can see obviously that it's black and that's because all Honda E's have black roofs because you can just pick a color and that contrasts with the black details so you can have white uh, some sort of gray um, a, a nice bright yellowy greeny one or, or this blue um, which I quite like uh, I think it looks very nice in this color I would probably pick the greeny yellowy one because I'm a bit odd um, you will also notice up here uh, no aerial to speak of not even a little shark fin or anything because the radio and antenna is incorporated into the C pillar to keep the design seamless and smooth clever aren't they Honda they know what they're doing anyway uh, let's go and move around to the back and have a look what's going on there and here we are at the back of the Honda E where you can see it's sort of a reflection of the front really with your two lights on the outside and then this black panel down the middle the light design is uh, again very similar to the front with the outer ring being the daytime running lights there's two slats in the middle for your brake lights obviously the brake light being up there you have uh, reversing lights that are with these little cutouts in the um, black fascia um, but other than that it's there's not really too much else to point out there's not really a diffuser obviously no exhaust so I think what we'll do next is open up the boot which is very conventional it's just a button in there and there you go that's a boot uh, supposedly it is quite small though 171 liters which means nothing to anyone but I can tell you that that's uh, about 50 liters smaller than a mini electric and 150 liters smaller than a Peugeot E208 um, so that's 
quite a considerable amount of space there. This is a flat load floor um, and you do have a nice little scuff plate here so you don't damage anything around the back of the car but there's no getting away from it it is quite small and there isn't any storage under here because that's where the motor is you can fold the back seats down but it's one unit so if you wanted to carry three people and a slightly longer item uh, tough luck they will have to walk um, so yeah it's not the most practical of vehicles uh, especially against other things in this segment but um, I sort of don't really care because I like how the car looks um, I suspect the story may be the same when I get in the back seats but we'll go and make sure and try that out now okay so um, the back seats this is where this sort of starts to uh, fall down a little bit if you're a uh, tall, gangly freak uh, such as I. Um, I'm sure that if you're not six foot two, you might be okay back here. I think if you're actually above six foot, you might struggle. There is a cutout in the roof for my head, but if I do sit up straight, then it still touches. This seat is in my driving position. I can't get my knee. I would be able to get my knees behind if the floor wasn't so high. But because the floor's high, because that's where the batteries are stored under there, um, the uh, angle and aperture and all of those words that journalists use is, isn't quite right for me. Uh, so I would have to stick my legs either side of the seat. Um, you do, uh, in terms of like features back here, because um, that's something I can be more positive about, you've got two USB sockets down here to plug your phones in. You have, instead of a uh, button up here for your lights, it's actually on the, um, the B pillar here, so I can fiddle around with that which I think is quite a sensible placement for it, really. Um, it is worth noting uh, you can only seat four people in this car. There's two outer seats, there is no middle seat. Uh, I'm quite glad of that because it means I don't have to test it, um, but um, just bear that in mind. I think it's the same on a three-door Mini anyway, or a Fiat 500, so again, not really that different. You've got some pockets here, Unfortunately, the door pockets um, are only really big enough for a small bottle of water. Um, not going to get too much else in there. But what I do really like is the materials that have been used. I am so sick to death of everything having to be leather or pleather or some variation of a peeled cow. There is no peeled cow in this car. It is fabric, all different nice textures you get some bronze or brown depending on your color interpretation seat belts which is matched with some bronze or brown stitching on the doors I do like that um, but uh, I could really quite do with moving into the front and out of these quite cramped back seats so I'll meet you there please Right, okay, so here we are inside the front of the Honda E. Um, and I'll start with the main controls, really. Uh, the steering wheel, which is a lovely two-spoke steering wheel. Um, and this, being the advanced model, um, has a heated steering wheel. So that's a nice little feature to have. Uh, it's standard sort of affair, really, with your volume control skip track on this side and then your cruise control functions, etc., on this side. Down in the center here, we have your HVAC controls, so your fan speed and your temperature and your direction, all physical buttons. Yes, well done, Honda. Not Volkswagen, you idiots who ruined your cars. Look at this, this is fantastic. Um, having proper buttons for stuff works. Although saying that, those are sort of the only buttons in here everything else is controlled through these screens 
And when I say these screens, I mean these screens. Um, this is ridiculous, really, for such a small car. You've got your driver's information screen directly in front of you, which is displaying your speed, uh, you, you know, gear, uh, percentage charge, your mileage range. All of that usual stuff is all on that screen directly in front of you. That's good. Then you move into the centre, um, where you can have... This is the sort of your screen where you'd have your sat-nav. I've got it set up currently with Apple CarPlay, which is why it's saying directions to Morrison's, uh, because for some reason uh, we were there this morning getting breakfast. Um, so you can do your Apple CarPlay stuff. I can have Spotify come up and listen to the Smith & Sniff podcast. Um, shout out. And uh, then this far screen is basically in front of the passenger, but it has probably the best app that I've seen in a car for a while, and that is this one, which is called Aquarium, um, which is loading now. And once that loads, look! Look at the little fishes! Um, so I can mess around with this to pretty much no end. So I can change the background that the fishes are swimming in. I can change the quantity of the fish uh, like this. And then, most crucially, I can uh, press the screen and drop little food pellets. And then the fishes swim over. But yes, this is um, something to keep you entertained while you're charging your car or something like that. Um, but I very much enjoy that. Speaking of things you can do while you're charging your car, um, this does have, down here, you've got a 12 volt, volt outlet, but you've got a household style three pin plug for us in the UK, which means I could plug in a PlayStation or a Nintendo or something like that and there is a HDMI port and you could play insert game name here on the dashboard you could yeah that's just like top tier uh, entertainment really in your car you know Mercedes S class you can't even do that Honda E it's all you need um, so you can do, I mean, you can do thousands of things with this screen. I'm not going to go through them all because, quite frankly, I don't have time. But I can talk about storage briefly. Um, there is a little pocket down here where those chargers are. If I pull this little toggle here, voila, a cup holder appears. And I can push that back. That's quite neat. You have a glove box, which is actually a decent size. The manual's in there at the minute. You have... Uh, storage down in the doors but again probably only big enough for a small bottle of water and then you have a central cubby thing down here with these little sliders which I can move to various different points so I can create a cup holder or a phone holder or something at the minute I've got it sort of set up so I can have the keys in one and a cup in another and something else but yeah it's um, really nice uh, obviously, uh, I should probably address the fact that the uh, the cameras are displayed on these sort of two angled TV screens, but I'll talk a little bit more about that when I drive. Down here, uh, you've got your sort of gear selector, well, drive selector really, because it doesn't have gears. You've got a pedal there, which is uh, for one, one pedal driving. We can have a go of that when we're out uh, on the road and a drive mode selector and handbrake. Now, oh yeah, I guess there's this nice little sunroof, which is quite a nice feature to have. Makes it feel even more airy and pleasant. And is that it? Oh no, forgive me. There is one of those very fancy rear view mirrors, which turns into a camera. So if you've got two people in the back and their massive fat heads are blocking your view, you can switch that on and then you can see behind you. That's good, I like that. Um, but yeah, that's sort of it for in here. Um, let's go out and take it for a proper drive and um, then we'll do a conclusion.
Right, so here we are, out on the open road, in the Honda E. And um, to follow on basically from what I was saying in my very quick uh, first impressions review that I did a while back, link in top corner, um, it's, it's very quiet and it's very comfortable. So what I didn't get a chance to do when we were at SMMT at Millbrook is talking through the um, figures um, on this car. So uh, we'll start off with power figures. So it's got a, a 154 PS, which is quite a lot for such a small car, and 315 newton meters of torque, which is a hell of a lot uh, for a car this size. It's um, 115 more than an up GTI uh, so yeah we're talking about we're talking about a lot of torque <laughs> um, so 0 60 is 8.3 seconds uh, again that's half a second quicker than an up GTI which is supposed to be a really sporty little car so when you're driving this around town it is nice and zippy, you know, you're not getting bogged down uh, at junctions, you can zoom in and out of traffic really nicely, which is a good thing. Um, so the battery is 35 kilowatts, um, and obviously that lives under the floor, and that gives a range of, well as I join the motorway, um, 135 miles ish but that's in perfect circumstances um, uh, you're probably gonna get realistically closer to a hundred in the real world that's sort of what I think we would do if we ran this car out today um, we've got 74 miles of range left and 70% of battery, so that roughly works out to 100 miles for 100%, so that's sort of what you can expect. Now that is less than what uh, the Mini Electric offers, for example, which is 143 miles in the rear, um, WLTP, uh, and the Fiat 500e is a lot more than that, that's uh, 199 miles on the WLTP cycle again slightly less than that in the real world but um, that sort of begs the question why this car is more expensive than those because the mini starts at 32,000 pounds and goes up to infinity because it's a mini and the Fiat 500 uh, the absolute top spec of the hardtop version of the new Fiat 500e is the well, just under £30,000. This, as tested, the Honda e Advance, is £36,000. Nearest, damn it. Uh, so, that's quite the premium over the other two. So hopefully it can make up for it in driving dynamics, because it has fully independent suspension all round, even at the back. So that means it can handle itself. Um, so it's actually quite fun, similar to what the Mini is, to be honest, um, that sort of go-karty feel. Uh, I suspect it's quite a lot nicer than the Fiat 500e to drive. I haven't actually driven the electric version of the 500, but um, the uh, petrol version that I have driven a couple of in different forms doesn't drive as nicely as this. It does make quite a nice funky little noise as well, uh, which I, I quite like. Oh, here's a speed bump. Here's a test of the comfort. Nice. Dealt with that quite well. Uh, parking up here. So actually, this uh, we're, we're coming into Tesco's. Um, not sponsored, and that gives us a great opportunity to try out the manoeuvrability and the parking uh, on the, the E because 
it has um, rather a brilliant turning circle because a London taxi, for example, a car with a absolutely crazy turning circle is just under eight meters. The Honda E is just over eight meters. So that should make parking very easy. So I'm just gonna uh, pop it into reverse and then go into this space. You can see all of my 12 million cameras working away. I've got a top down view so I can see exactly where my car is in between the lines, how close I am to the van behind me. I've got my mirrors. And there you go, perfectly in the space. That's brilliant. Okay, so I've put it in one pedal mode, which means that I'm in theory now, I don't need to use the brake pedal. I can just use the regen when I lift my foot off the accelerator. And that is slightly strange, but it does work. And it will come to a complete stop as well, which is good. Then it is a true one pedal car. It's not just turning the regen all the way up, it's actually making a proper difference. I'm gonna use it on this slip road. I'm not going to touch the brake unless there's an emergency. But well, let's just try and have some fun. Still haven't used the brake yet. See if I can get all the way back without using the brake. That seems dangerous. This could turn into a game. Let's not do that. Um, so in terms of uh, everything else, I mean, I've talked you through the screens instantly you get used to the fact that there's cameras rather than wing mirrors because they're in the correct place not like on the oh, I don't know Audi e-tron for example where I'm, I'm talking about the the big SUV one where they're like down here somewhere and it's just not where you naturally would look these are so they're good Steering is extremely light uh, when you're around town, but you can put it into sport mode uh, and it does weight up, I mean, slightly. It's, it's still not, it's not a sports car, but you wouldn't expect it to be. It's a small electric city car. I would be intrigued if Honda was tempted to do a Type R version of this given that it is a rear wheel drive and it does have fully independent rear suspension. It's almost like they planned ahead, but we'll see if that comes to fruition. But this, this is just a very calm, relaxing, comfortable, quiet, peaceful car to potter about in. It's effortless, really. In terms of visibility, uh, you've got a great view out ahead. You actually sit quite high up. Uh, that seems to be a trait of electric cars with the batteries being under the floor. Everything seems to be set up a bit higher. Um, the glass house is really big and it's quite a square boxy shape. So seeing out the back is easy, seeing over my shoulder. The C pillars are a little thick, I guess, but you've got these cameras and they're better than mirrors so you know you literally don't have a blind spot with these so i don't think that would you know the c pillars being that thick would be a problem at all really so by the time something is sort of coming out of your mirror or camera view you can already see it here so the blind spot just doesn't exist uh, i think this will become the next sort of big thing that cars have because it does make sense I thought it was a bit of a gimmick at first but it really does make sense especially when they're done as well as this so I've said that it's quicker than an up GTI and all of that sort of stuff but it doesn't really give an explanation of how it feels because it's an electric car you've got instant torque from zero RPM so it feels a lot quicker than that off the line same with 
all electric cars really is it's that initial zero to 30 miles an hour that's sort of the the peak of its acceleration um, and then it drops off the faster you go but it, it gives you a nice firm shove in the back when you set off it's um, it's very fun and I, I don't have any sort of really twisty roads to have a go on today um, but if you want to see what the uh, the E feels like on some more twisty roads I did do a uh, impression first impressions video um, at the Alpine handling course at Millbrook if you uh, interested in that it's on that thing there probably in terms of the overall cabin um, it's sort of a mixed bag in terms of material quality you've got nice squidgy material stuff up on top of the doors and where you rest your arm but then stuff like round where the uh, the door handles are uh, this plastic on the dashboard and further down is scratchy uh, I mean at this price point you might expect a little better obviously none of this wood is real but then how many cars do you have this sort of screen display in? None really. Um, not unless you're talking like an S-Class or something like that in terms of screenage in your car. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's, it's no different to most other cars in this class really. The Mini's gonna have scratchy plastic, so's the Fiat 500. Um, it just it, at the end of the day it's going to come down to which one you like the look of the best if you need the range and which you're most comfortable sitting in I find the 500 uncomfortable to sit in because I'm tall this very comfortable anyway that's enough of me rambling on um, what I'll do now is I'll hand over to me for a conclusion So there you are, there's a full review of the Honda E. I very much enjoyed my day with the, uh, the little E. Um, in terms of a conclusion though, I have to say that compared to the Mini or the 500 electric, it is somewhat compromised in terms of range and price. In many ways really, it's like a supercar. It's um, very nice to look at expensive and flashy and uh, somewhat impractical um, but you still for some reason you can't quite explain find yourself yearning after one I really like this car and I really want one but it is compromised I would I would I would buy one but you might it might not suit your needs you need to consider the range uh, if you can afford one um, but for me, this is a great little car. So there you go. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, hit the thumbs up button down below. While you're there, you can have a look in the description and find um, all of our social media. You can find links to our Patreon. You can become a member. If you've got something to say, you can also do it down there in the comments. But the most important thing you can do is subscribe so that you can see more videos just like this uh, in the future. Um, if you want to look as cool and as stylish as I am, uh, then we have links to our merchandise as well. So go and check that out. But all that's left for me to say is goodbye.